Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd. Ahabat tifillah, a question was asked. As-salamu alaykum, Ustaz, barakallahu fikum. There's a place called Speaker's Corner, Hyde Park in London, where people from all faiths, ideologies, and beliefs go to debate. There are two Muslim brothers who have been asked many times by Muslims and non-Muslims to condemn ISIS, but they never do. They all always say, we neither condemn nor condone, or sometimes they refuse to say anything. However, they are known to be followers of Anjim uh, Chaudhry. I am not sure if I should confront them or stay quiet as I have a YouTube channel to give advice. Also, if I was to give advice, should it be in public or private? Barakallahu feekum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kitab al Kareem, Wajadaluhum billati hiya ahsan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands to argue with them with that which is better. And what we see from the madhab of the salaf of this ummah, that the salaf were not uh, a mu'min in general from the usul, is to avoid debating and avoid controversy and avoid uh, getting in disputes and arguments. And the reasons being for this, and that many of the ulama mention, for one, Imam Abdul Mahsin al abad I recall, was asked about people who have online forums and they get in debates with takfiris. And he said that this is absolutely uh, incorrect, that some students do this. And the reason he was saying this is because, for one, and as many of the a'imma uh, that you'll find if you go to the, the text about this uh, from Imam Ahmed and other than him, and of course many of the books of the Salaf, you see that they talk about a mirar, uh, a mirar and, and you know debating and arguing, and especially about sifat and the qadr and things like this, that the, the asl is to avoid it. Why? Why? So why should we try to implement those kawa'id min hajiyah from the salaf now. Why should we do that? And that would fall into the uh, example of Hyde Park. And first, as Sheikh Sheikh uh, 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 Abdul Masin mentioned, one of the things he mentioned, he said perhaps that the one indulging in these debates, he may be a person from Ahl Sunnah, and the person who's on falsehood or is a mubtadiyah is on bid'ah, but perhaps in the bab of argumentation, the one of bid'ah is better. So he could just plain and simple be a better person of argument and debate. He could be very good with his tongue. He could be very charismatic. So the people are not focused on the truth, but in fact, this person could beat you in debate. He can beat you with his tongue. His tongue can be used like a weapon, even if you have something from the haq, or that in general, you are a person who adheres to the truth. So this is one of the reasons, is because the person may have the weakness in the actual ability to debate and engage in discussion and argumentation, number one. Number two, perhaps the person who is a person of Ahl Sunnah who wants to debate with Ahl Bid'ah and others, that perhaps they are not well versed. So meaning this person could be a person who's da'if fil ilm, that their actual knowledge that they have is weak. They may not be very strong in memorization. They may not be strong uh, in, uh, in actually knowing the text. Maybe they only know some of these greater issues, especially the issues of takfir and ruling by other than what Allah revealed, and all these major messiah. Understand these are major messiah. These aren't for just everyone to get involved like everyone does in this day and age. And so to get into debates about these things without solid grounding, as a talib, uh, talib al ilm, you know, or a, you know, a scholar or something, this can be a big problem because perhaps your hujjah, your dalil, your evidence is weak. Perhaps you only know the statements of the scholars. All you can say, Sheikh so and so said, Sheikh so and so said, but you don't really know the ta you don't have ta'sila masail, you don't have the foundation in those masail, in those issues, all the issues, uh, the furur. Well, a soul of the issue, the, the foundation principles and the subsidiary issues that are related to those issues. 
and the Kawaid and, and, and the 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 wabit, you know, the criterion and the principles. You may not have that be well versed like that. So then again, from another point, the person can overtake you because they might have more knowledge than you, plain and simple. More knowledge, even if they're on falsehood. Even if they're on bid'ah, they might have more knowledge than you on this issue or more knowledge of the book and the sunnah. So it's very important to beware of debating. And those are just two of the reasons. So one could be, as we mentioned, that you are not good in debate and argumentation. Number two, that you are uh, uh, not well-versed and not strong in knowledge to be getting into debates. Number three, the third reason, and this is also something that Ben Baz, uh, you know, he was, he was challenged during his lifetime by some, uh, by the, I think it was the Mufti of uh, Oman, who's uh, Ibadiyya on some issues, you know, uh, of, you know uh, according to their menhaj, their menhaj, Ibadiyya is one of the groups of the tech, you know, they are a, 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 a sect of, um, of the Khawarij. They are a sect of the Khawarij. And so he wanted to debate with uh, Ben Baz, I believe, on television. Ben Baz refused. Why? Was it because he was, was it, was he not an imam of the sunnah? Was he not Qawi Jiddin, very strong in Hujja wa Bayan? Naam, he was. Was he not probably good in argumentation as well? Naam, this great imam, you know, he's, in, he's known as an imam of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah in this time for those reasons. For his ilm and his fiqh and his qawwa. However, he refused. So this is coming to the third reason. The third reason is, is you're giving them a member. You're giving them a podium to express their views. Okay? And perhaps those listening to the debate may be convinced by their arguments, may be influenced, may find from their own logic, not the lo not based on Kitab wa Sunnah, but according to their hoa, their desires. They like the way he speaks. It made more sense to them what he has to say from Ahl Bid'ah. So those are the three reasons of why I would advise not to. Now, if you are a student of knowledge and you're telling me that you're doing some Dawah and you have a YouTube page and stuff like this, uh, if, if you have some, if you study with some scholars or, you know, you have some uh, Islamic uh, background and you have uh, some strength in Bayan and you can at least command the good and forbid the evil, well then give them some Dawah to the extent of your ability. But do not debate and argue with them. Do not debate and argue with them unless you're, oh, you know, you have that strength. That would be from some of your big students of knowledge that you have there in the UK. Like uh, there's many, mashallah, talibat al-ilm and shuyukh, you know, from their society that are well known. And, and the brothers, uh, especially a lot of the Salafis, have a lot of experience. Some of the uh, tulab al-ilm have a lot of experience there in the UK with dealing with those takfiris. So for some of those guys, perhaps under certain circumstances, that may be okay. But the asal is to avoid it. Now, I'm going to give you another uh, thing in relation to this, a, a, a last point of why I'm saying this. I saw recently one of the brothers who, I, I, I think, I guess he's a, 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 a student of knowledge, but it seems to me he only studied, he mentioned that he studied with one of the du'at that are known there, in the UK, I heard him say that. So it seems to me he's never left the UK to do Talib al ilm and, you know, really gotten under scholars, but he studied with other students of knowledge. And I saw where he was debating in Hyde Park. And he was debating with, you know, some Tekfiri youngsters came up to him and they were going back and forth. And I just thought it was kind of ridiculous and it really didn't do any justice for Da'wah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the reason I say that is because, one, it made him kind of belittle his position because he can't control himself. You know, it was a shouting match between the Tekfiris. Another guy intervenes who is influenced by the Tekfiris and he wants to tell him, Ahi, be quiet. This one, be quiet. You know, it just became such a back and forth uh, kind of, um, uh, you know, this, this, this kind of uh, uncontrolled discourse that it kind of belittles the stature. For example, if you see someone that you respect as a Talib al ilm and you see him debating with someone, and then you see that he loses loses control a little bit. He calls him, you're just a stupid Tekfiri. You're just a Tekfiri retard. You're just this. 
you're going to kind of lose respect for him, even though he may be a person of Ahlul Sunnah, but he, you see these, these, these mistakes or these issues in his, his, uh, in his manners. And you see that he maybe doesn't have the strength to control himself. And so this is a, a, a fourth reason that I will put forward and why I would not be, a, you know, it's a very different environment. That's what you do in the UK. You have a long history of people going to that place. And I've heard about it from the, from a long time ago from different brothers that I've known from Birmingham and Brixton and the brothers in, you know, all over the UK who used to tell me about this place of debate. And I've seen a few videos of that. And I would say, in general, giving dawah is one thing, but getting into debates and argumentation, I would avoid that because a lot of times you belittle yourself and you may belittle the dawah. Even if it's a disbeliever, you may argue with a disbeliever who's very strong and maybe has even stronger knowledge. If you're not a person of a uh, student of knowledge, he may have stronger knowledge of some doubtful things about Islam than you. And you don't know how to uh, deal with that and address that. So then you look stupid and then therefore Islam looks stupid to the in the eyes of the people listening. So it can sometimes do a greater harm than good. And whatever you do, you want to have, you want to weigh the, the, the masali wa mafasid. You want to look at the, 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 the benefits and the harms of the situation. So you want to make sure that the, the, the benefits outweigh the mafasid, the harms. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said was correct was from Allah Anything I said that was incorrect was for myself and the shaitan.